Hey guys, it's Chase from Basecamp Adventure Fitness and today I have a special guest. His name is Kenneth Woolley. He's a performance coach and he runs a business called Performance and Postures. And Kenneth initially helped me uh, with my posture and helped me recover a few of my, my walking issues. But I just thought I'd give a chance to Kenneth to explain what it is you do in, in everyday life. And you don't usually w work with trekkers no. or climbers, but um, wh who do you usually work with and what do you do? Well, so obviously my main passion is within postural reconditioning and actually teaching people how to carry themselves uh, in a correct manner to relieve pain and also to actually improve athletic performance. So it sounds really weird, but you think about posture just like standing or walking, but mm -hmm. posture is actually how you carry your body. Okay. If, you, if you're sprinting or if you're changing directions, it doesn't matter, it's still a posture. Mm -hmm. So I work with a lot of athletes. Uh, from younger athletes all the way up to actual Olympic and Commonwealth levels, mm -hmm. uh, both strength coaching and also postural reconditioning. Mm -hmm. So posture is not just about standing still and standing upright, it's, it's dynamic. It's actually about moving and being able to be stable and have control over your own body mm -hmm. in all sorts of movements you do. So we're working with uh, mountain athletes today, so we're going to show you a couple of exercises that you can do and have a little bit of a talk about uh, your walking posture up and downhill and how carrying a heavy pack can change your posture and a couple of things you might be able to do um, to firstly mitigate the injury or the fatigue you feel and actually to, to make yourself stronger right now using uh, nothing other than what's in your pack. Now, the, the couple of questions that I want to ask you in particular is around your walking posture and how to go up and downhill carefully yeah. without injury. So firstly, um, how should we stand when we've got potentially, you know, 20 or to even 30 kilos on our, on our back? Want to just explain that posture for us a little? Yeah, so what I want to do is to avoid this hyperextension, this military sort of posture. So I'm going to bend my knees slightly, I'm going to have my feet fairly close together. I'm going to sit my hips back gently, not all the way back, just a bit, relax my shoulders, and just gently retract my neck. I just kind of think of making a double chin when you do that. Okay. Which is actually really going to kick in your midsection. So if you start to walk like this and stand like this, you're actually going to get a stronger midsection as well. Firstly, get your left foot a bit further forwards. Okay. Yep, there you go. Now you're even. Now bend your knees slightly. That's it. Now sit your hips back for me. Yep. That's it. And now just really just relax your shoulders. Now, imagine drawing your belly button to your spine at the same time and push your abs out to the side. Push out against my fingers. Okay. Yep. Now, just, it doesn't have to be really tense, but just a subtle sort of contraction. Okay. Okay, so that's probably how you should stand mm -hmm. when you wore 10Ks and you just want to take a rest. Do the same when you take your pack off. You sit down and relax. Okay. So, I'm going to be less fatigued by, by not locking the knees out. Yeah, definitely. So what's actually going to happen is that you're distributing all the forces evenly throughout your whole body. So there's mm -hmm. only, not only one section of your body that actually is taking all the load. Mm -hmm. So in that way, you're actually going to be less fatigued after a long walk and throughout the whole walk as well. With walking uphill and sprinting uphill as well, it's actually a really good tool to teach the right biomechanics of walking mm -hmm. and maintaining the right posture for the simple reason being that your hips are automatically going to come further back mm -hmm. and if you maintain that bend in the knees yep. you're already going to be in that walking posture now lean slightly forwards tuck your chin and look straight ahead now take small steps and make sure that you feel the whole foot on the ground We're going to combine this with this military posture that we spoke about earlier. So if you imagine we're having an object here, I want to step over that. Mm -hmm. So I really need to come up to maintain my center of gravity. Okay. And then push down onto that object and then climb over. And then I'm back into my normal walking posture. Right. Really 
maintain that contraction in your glutes. Mm -hmm. so you, as soon as you come up, your hips shouldn't jut out to the side. Okay. You should be literally be straight up. Yeah. So glute strength is something else that's really important. Glute strength is very, very important. Okay, now let's talk about uh, downhill posture. Getting up a mountain is fine, but uh, getting down is, is a whole nother story, especially when you're, you know, you've got half the work done and you're already fatigued. It's pretty much the same thing in downhill walking. You want to maintain feet flat on the ground and really have a solid base of support. When I walk downhill, I actually want to load my quads. Yeah. And they should do most of the work. I to bend my knees, make sure that you feel your whole feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, I'm literally just going to take small steps all the time. Okay. And um, toes pointed out in any direction or just toes straight? Toes straight ahead. Make sure that you gently brace your abs to your belly button to your spine. Mm -hmm. Push your abs out against the side. Okay. And then just look straight ahead. Look where you're walking. And then just let the movement actually happen. Okay. We spoke about low back pain earlier and when people are walking downhill and they start to do this and then that's always going to cause some sort of like a ripple effect up into your lower back mm -hmm. which is really just going to start to jam the vertebrae in the back mm -hmm. and the sacroiliac joints joint between your pelvis and your lower back. Yes, so all that shock would be coming straight up through your knees and into your hips and they're exactly the, um, the joints that we really want to protect because they're our walking joints, right? Exactly. So. I'm just going to show you a really quick exercise you can use to actually release the tension from your hips and your lower back and really kick in your midsection and your AD ductus, so the muscles on the inside of your thigh and also within your deep glute muscles. You can use whatever you have available, if it's a jumper that you just fold together or you can have a towel or a pillow or whatever you might have. Down jacket, if you've got one on your back. Really doesn't matter. Well, this is pretty much perfect, hey? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. You know, we'll just, just inflate it a little? Yeah, or you can just fold it up. Okay. Just keep so that's up. all you need? Yep, that's okay. all we need. Cool shot. So pretty easy. So what I want to do is to activate my adduct muscles, right? Okay. So I want to still... Which one? Are they there on the inside? Yep, on the inside of your thigh and also your deep, deep glute muscles. Okay. Actually, they aid in internal rotation. Mm -hmm. So you're rotating your femur in like this. So what I want to do is maintain that normal walking posture like we just spoke about. Mm -hmm. So I want to Sit my hips gently back, relax my shoulders, and have a slight bend in my knees. Now I want to place whatever object you have have in between your knees. Mm -hmm. And from here, I'm going to maintain this posture, and all I'm going to do is squeeze it together with my knees. Not very forcefully, just about 50% of what you can do in one maximal contraction. Now I'm just going to sit back and relax. If you want to, you can just gently retract your shoulder blades, and you're just going to maintain that posture. And from here, I'm just going to start to squeeze and release, squeeze and release the object with my knees. Do that about 10 to 20 times. Stand up, relax, and just make sure that you keep your posture afterwards. We're standing on a bit of uneven ground now, but just make sure that you have that normal standing and walking posture when you're done. I'm going to sit my hips back again, just like I normally do when I'm walking and standing correctly. So instead of being here, I'm going to sit back gently, tuck my chin. And now this pack is, obviously it wants, it's going to pull me this way. I don't want that. So I want to stand straight up. And what I'm going to do now, is just take small steps and walk. It's nice and easy without falling over to the side or starting to wobble with my feet. That's all the exercise is. Sure. Then you change sides and you do the same on the other side. Of course. So you can walk for about 15 meters, turn around, walk back, change sides, and then do the same again. Talk you through a really quick but very effective exercise and how to strengthen your glutes. So pretty much the muscles sitting on the outside of your hips, not your glute max, but the smaller ones on the outside, responsible for doing the action such as rotating your thigh in and out and keeping your pelvis in line when we're walking. So, do you mind laying down on the sure. ground for me? So from here, it's called the clamp, and you're going to see why. Now, you're just going to rest your head on your palm. Yep. So just bend your palm up like that, just like a model. Oh yeah. Pretty. 
<laughs> now from here, just make sure that your body's aligned, mm -hmm. so you're not tilting backwards too much forwards. Now what you're going to do here, is make sure you clamp your heels together, sure. okay? Yeah. And now you're gently going to lift your knee up by squeezing the muscles in this side here. Okay. Can you feel it right here? Yeah, yeah. So you can hold your you really hand. Really got to kind of concentrate on, on lifting with the glute. Yeah. yeah. So you can hold your hand on your hip here. Mm -hmm. And your thumb just on muscles. Yeah. Right here. You can actually feel that today. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you want to do. Make sure that you don't hold back. Okay. Just make sure that you tilt your body forward. Yeah, you're going to have to do like five reps to really actually feel it. Yeah, let's do about 20. Okay. So excellent exercise uh, for my clients who are rock climbers who really need to be able to step up and out to high ledges and also for trekkers who need to, to walk up steep sections yeah. over boulders, you know, over rocks, mud, ice, snow, all the rest of it. Just people in general. Yeah, it's... if you're just sitting around doing nothing, do the clam. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kenneth. No worries. Cheers, man. buddy. Thanks, guys. Walk safe, train hard, climb high. <laughs>